Hey guys, what's up? Today I will be sharing with you 10 secrets to become a good programmer fast. If you watch this video and you apply these tips I give you, you, sir or madam, will be on your way to becoming a programming gangster. Let's begin. Number one learn concepts not languages so one thing beginner programmers are always worried for is that they don't know enough languages it seems like everyone in the industry knows at least like 1500 languages and no one just uses only one so you have to learn everything before you can start coding that is not the case the most important thing about programming is that you have the correct mindset and the problem solving skills and you can think sequentially to solve a problem you don't need to learn a hundred languages to be able to think like a programmer what you should do at the least as a beginner is to learn one language and learn it pretty well and using that language you can learn algorithms and data structures which is also very important which you can use to solve most problems when it's time to build something you can't with your existing knowledge you will naturally find another tool that does a job for you and you will learn that and slowly with time your toolkit will expand and you'll end up being one of those programmers that knows like 20 languages 15 different frameworks and be able to speak japanese or something i don't know is that something programmers do i can't speak japanese but i know some people do it so start learning that one language well and don't worry about the rest for now a language i recommend everyone knows and especially beginners is python number two learn to do proper debugging so this is something i always had an issue with personally i usually like debugging just using print statements i don't know why that's how i started doing it it's just kind of fun i guess to like just put your print statements in the way and get stuff output to the terminal but that's not the most efficient way to do things i had a friend at university who would always complain about how i, I debug and he was like dude but the ide has a debugger why don't you use that and the answer is i was just a bit lazy to learn how to use it and printing worked anyway so i was like yeah i don't really need to learn that but once i did i did see how it would make things much easier so if you use an ide like pycharm for python you have a debugger which you can use at any time you put like a little mark in your code and when you run it in debugger mode it tells you exactly at that point what values you're variables have where your program is crashing what's happening at this point and gives you a lot more information than you would get by putting like a hundred random print statements that you have to manually clean afterward also debugging is one of the main things you do as a programmer because no one writes code that works at once even to this day after five years of doing this thing i won't write a piece of code that would work from the first run without making some small typo unless it's very simple code because you know we're humans we forget the semicolon here and there it happens when that compiler complains and your code doesn't work you need to be able to figure out why that doesn't work without asking other people and trust me that will happen a lot so learn how to debug number three make a lot of projects this is a big one when you start learning to code you watch a bunch of courses you solve exercises and that gives you a nice satisfaction after you do it and it's a very nice structured way to learn something and it's a really good way but when you start a project from scratch you kind of realize where your gaps are and what you actually don't know and there are many times almost always Ways where I know something really well but when the time comes to start the project I realize you know what I don't actually understand why this works oh actually when they were doing it in the coursework they had this extra line of code I didn't even read which was quite important these things you pick up after you start making projects and doing a lot of projects really builds your confidence as a programmer as well or in anything actually because you can actually start something from scratch and you see the whole pipeline and see how things work and also that gives you extra satisfaction because if you want to make a project for some specific use case of your own if you want to make a game for example you can just build it yourself and you can know that thing is your creation it's alive. It's alive. so after you learn the basics of coding start doing some projects number four learn how to write scripts and tools to automate things many often many often very often while you're writing code you end up doing some things again and again and again things that end up wasting your time that you could be using to drink coffee while your code is compiling and not only do these tasks take time but also it's very annoying to do them for example if you want to deploy your code you don't want to go and fix the settings every time you do a deployment you want to have that taken care of when you just want to push your code so learn to write bash scripts python scripts things that will automate small annoying tasks tasks that you have to do manually every day and number five learn to read and modify code so one of the most hated things programmers have to do is read other people's code and understand it and trust me you end up doing this very often especially if some asshole writes really bad code with no comments at all and you spend like a whole week trying to understand what the hell they did people get very very pissed so make sure you write good code but very often you get handed legacy code or code written by someone else and you have to modify that code so you have to read it 
So you have to read through it, understand what's happening. And that's a skill that takes some practice. And you have to do this a lot of times until you get faster at doing this. Number six, experiment in different fields and see what you like. So even though I ended up specializing in machine learning and AI, I didn't really know what I wanted to do before I tried a bunch of different things. And generally as a person, I'm always like very curious and I really like to get my hands dirty learning different things. So I had a bunch of different fields I was interested in when I was at university. I had periods where I was interested in making mobile apps, periods where I was interested in making websites. But to be honest, now web development for me is my least favorite thing. It's just so obscure and very unorganized. And there's a million ways to do the same thing and no one agrees on which one is the best way. I was also very interested in cybersecurity for a period or computer graphics, but that really didn't go well. I actually mentioned that in my other video, do we need math to be a programmer? And finally, I chose to do machine learning and that was still like a shot in the dark. I wasn't really sure what I was signing up to. I signed up for a master's in AI and machine learning without having much experience. I just saw some stuff online. I thought it looked interesting and I was like sure I'll try it and that ended up being the thing I enjoyed the most so the moral of the story is if you find something new interesting don't be afraid to start learning about it experiment and then see how much you like it you might end up not liking it as you originally expected or you might end up liking it even more and spending some more time learning it and even if you change your field you're not gonna lose much you have still built knowledge that will help you in other things and you're always becoming a better programmer and that's why I'm so proud of you Number seven, learn to test your code. This is a big mistake people do, and I've done it, and I still do it sometimes. You don't test your code. So when you're writing your code, you think everything works, you do like a few rounds, and then six months in, after you try to change things, everything breaks, you have functions that used to work before, but now they're like disappeared, and your whole project is a mess, and you have to start over again, or you end up wasting countless hours debugging what the hell went wrong. So what you should do is at the least learn how to write good unit tests. That way, when you make any changes to your code, you still have the old tests, which will test your entire program's functionality, and you can still know if everything works well. Also, teams and team managers really like people who know how to write good tests, so it will really make you more likable if your code works well with your tests. Number eight, don't stop learning. So programming and technology are one of those fields that are always moving and you can't stop reading or learning new things. Otherwise, in a very short amount of time, your knowledge becomes obsolete. And the biggest example is web development. There's always new stuff coming out and stuff that used to be popular goes away. And even things like machine learning, they didn't really used to be that popular a while ago, but now everyone wants to jump on and learn it. And there's new tools coming out like PyTorch and TensorFlow that makes it easier for machine learning engineers to work. So you have to keep your eyes open and learn the new things when they come out. Number nine, get an internship or a job. This is hands down one of the biggest things you can do to become a good programmer fast. And the reason is simple. You spend at least eight hours a day writing code and working with other people who know their stuff better than you do. So in two to three months time, you've written so much code and you've had so much experiences and conversations that really take your skills to a new level. Because at the end of the day, the fastest way to get good is being fully immersed in something and doing it for a very long time. And when they pay you to write code, that really helps the immersion process. At least in London, it's very uncommon to find a software development internship that doesn't pay you. So if you find one, just run away because there's someone else out there who's gonna pay you. And of course, having a permanent job will help you even more because the internship goes for like two or three months while the job is indefinite. But finding an internship is usually the first step to finding a job, so it's still very recommended. And number 10, and this is never talked about, find yourself a mentor. The fastest way to get good at anything in life and not just coding is finding someone who has been through the same experience and has faced the same problems, found a way to solve those problems and got very good at it. If you get that person to mentor you, you will become better exponentially faster. Because whatever little thing you have that's stopping you from becoming better at code, whatever roadblock or question you can't find on Stack Overflow, that person will usually know the solution or will know how to find it. Having that one-to-one -one relationship really helps your progression. And the best thing about having a mentor is not just having the technical knowledge, but it's also that you have someone to keep you accountable for your actions, to tell you how you progress or to tell you you're doing a good job when you're not sure about yourself. A good mentor will help you achieve things you didn't think were possible. I can't do it. It's just too difficult. Bullshit. You can't give up. Not now. I've tried everything. It just won't compile. Listen, kids. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty... Are you using that Rocky code? You know, everyone knows that, right? Well, it doesn't really matter. Use what I taught you. Use. The code. The code.
It works. I knew you could do it. Now go wash my car, bitch. True story. So these are the 10 secrets of becoming a good programmer fast. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and click on notifications so you know when I release a new video. Let me know in the comments below, what do you think of these tips? Do you have any secrets of becoming a good programmer that I didn't mention in this video? Put it down in the comments. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.